In this video, I'm going to do three symbolization questions that are all a bit more difficult, or they just have some sort of new uh, tricks that we need to be aware of. Jane doesn't buy both popcorn and candy unless it's a cheat day, but only when it's not will she work out. So I have lots of things I need to look at. So I have the doesn't both, which is just a variant of not both. I also have this unless, and then I have this comma but, and I also have this only when it's not. And so there's actually a lot of stuff going on. You know what, I'm gonna change that. I'll just mark off the only when and leave the it's not on its own. The easiest thing to do is to identify the main break, and that will help me uh, work on separate things. So here the main connective is associated with a comma, which is pretty typical, but the comma is associated with the word but, as I highlighted, and of course, comma but is just an and. So I'm going to know that the main connective is and. After that, I can just work on the left conjunct. Jane doesn't buy both popcorn and candy unless it's a cheat day. So not both is the form of this, so popcorn and candy. So that's negation P and Q, or you could have used the alternate form. Nope, that's this, or negation Q, and we can just use brackets to be safe. But unless it's a cheat day, my preferred way of doing unless, which I'm sure you're all familiar with by now, is just to use a disjunction. It's a cheat day is R. To preserve this and, which is the green comma but, as the main connective, I'm going to put up some brackets around this so that I don't have a non-well-formed formula. Now I have to do only when it's not, will she work out? So only when is only if it's not. So one of the key tricky words here is the it. This is a reference term and I just have to understand what it is pointing to. So it's gonna to point to the last thing, the last clause that I was really saying, and that's cheat day. So if it's not really means if it's not a cheat day. So now that we have that figured out, uh, Jane will work out, that's S. Is this negation R arrow S or is it S arrow negation R? I'm gonna ignore the only. If this says, if it's not a cheat day, then she will work out. That's negation R arrow S. So of course this should say S arrow negation R because of the only. And I put up brackets just to make sure that uh, I don't have a confusion in my main connect. If it's a Monday, which is enough for Rosie to be sad, or a Tuesday, which is required for Shannon to be sad, then neither Rosie nor Shannon have the day off. This is a question full of uh, non-restrictive clauses, and the way to identify them is that we have this comma which and another comma, and I'll use the same color to highlight this one, this comma which and then this comma. So because we have this comma which, we know immediately that these clauses can just be ripped out and symbolized independently with a conjunction. So I'm gonna ignore a lot of the sentence and I'm just gonna focus on this first one here, which is, uh, which is enough for Rosie to be sad. Okay, I put a box on it. I'm actually gonna remove the box now because it's gonna get in the way later. So what does it mean to be is enough for Rosie to be sad? I just have to understand what it's referring to, and the which here is referring to it being a Monday. So what does enough mean? Is enough is a stylistic variant for saying is sufficient, because if it's enough for this to happen, it's a sufficient condition. So the sufficient condition is the Monday, and the sufficient condition introduces, or is really, the antecedent. So this says, if it's Monday, then Rosie is sad. And this entire thing should be marked off by a conjunction, and that's the first clause there. Now I'm gonna skip the inside, and I'm gonna do the next non-restrictive clause, which says, which is required for Shannon to be sad. Required means necessary. So the necessary condition, which is necessary, is the reference is it being Tuesday. So I know that the necessary condition, Tuesday, has to be the consequent. So I know that I'm gonna say arrow, it is Tuesday, and if it, uh, what is the necessary condition talking about? It's talking about Shannon being sad, so that's S. Again, I wanna preserve my connectives, 
And because these are just strings of non-restrictive clauses, I just use ands over and over again. Now what I have left, I'm going to highlight. If it's Monday or a Tuesday, then neither Rosie nor Shannon have the day off. And this is how you want to symbolize non-restrictive clauses. You want to, well, at least I do the non-restrictive clause first, and then I just read the rest of the sentence without those comma which clauses, and I symbolize that. And this is now straightforward. If it's a Monday or a Tuesday, so I'm going to open a bracket. Uh, if it's a Monday or a Tuesday, P or Q, then neither Rosie nor Shannon have the day off. It's not the case that Rosie has the day off or Shannon has the day off. And that's it. Of course, you could have used the alternate form here of the neither nor, perfectly fine. Last question. One can go to grad school or not, but doing the former means you have at most two of good grade social life or enough sleep. Now, in my first pass of highlighting, I actually miss something. It's the comma but. Now, the comma but is important because the comma is really indicating the main connective here, which is the and. So that's the green. I'll highlight it. And we have to finish by doing uh, the sort of left conjunct and then the right conjunct. So the left conjunct is one can go to grad school or not. So one goes to grad school or not literally just says P or not P. And that, well, isn't very exciting. One can go to grad school or not. But doing the former, now the former here is a reference term, and it always refers to the English. So the former here is can go to grad school, uh, not the negation form. So doing the former means you have at most two of. This is just a fancy sort of a conditional statement. If you do the former, so if you go to grad school, that means that you have at most two of good grades, social life, or enough sleep. Q R S. So you just have to know how to symbolize the quantity at most two. So there's several ways to sort of do it. Uh, at most two can be symbolized uh, by saying at least two, but not all three. That's a very long way of saying it. But another way of saying at most two of three things is just to say it's not the case that you can have all of them. Q and R and Yes. That's the quick way and the nice way of symbolizing at most two of three, because as long as you don't have all three, you could have none of them, you could have one of them, you could have two of them, but you can't have all of them, which means you're stuck at at most two of these things.